To reinvent yourself means becoming the best of what God intended for you. Becoming the best of what God intended for you. The King James says his thought towards us are not evil, but out of peace to bring us to an expected end. But I like the way the message version puts it. It says, I know what I am doing. That's God speaking here. In spite of the virus, in spite of the pandemic, in spite of the lockdown, God says, I know what I am doing. In spite of what you are going through, God says to you this morning, I know what I am doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, and he will take care of you. Amen. Plan not to abandon you, he will not abandon you. Amen. Plans to give you the future you hope for. Whatever future that you hope for shall be delivered unto your hands. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The purpose of reinventing ourselves is to become a new person. Because the time we are in is a different time. And this time requires a reinvention. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, To everything there is a season, and a time for every matter of purpose under the heaven, including the present season that we are in. We need to have the understanding of the time we are in. And what is this time? First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 describes a tribe of Israel, known as the tribe of Isaac. He said they are men of understanding who knew what Israel ought to do. May God, may, may the Lord make it possible for us to be described as men and women of understanding that know we ought to do at every point in time in the name of Jesus Christ. What time are we in? This time is described in three, in six alphabets. When you put the alphabets together, you pronounce it Vucca. V-U-C-C-A-R. V talks about volatile, volatility. The time we are in is a volatile period. Meaning that things can change at any time. Meaning that people can change at any time. Meaning that how, I mean, wives can suddenly change. The husband can suddenly change. Somebody that smiled with you a while ago can so suddenly explode. That's the time we are in. So you need to mind the way we relate with people. Glory be to God. The U there stands for uncertainty. When it says something is uncertain, it means that it's not fixed. It's not known. It's not sure. The first C means chaotic. That talks about confusion here and there. But for us, I pray that God will give us direction. The second C means complexity. It means it's difficult. It means not simple. Difficult to make ends meet, difficult to feed the family, difficult to do one thing or the other for us. It shall be simple in the name of Jesus. Amen. The ADM means ambiguity with multiple interpretations and meaning here and there. And the last alphabet, R, means risky. Risky means it's dangerous. It is dangerous to hug one another. It is dangerous to shake them with somebody. Praise God. It is dangerous to come close to somebody. That is the time that we are in. So we need to have the understanding of this time. Having known this, how do I reinvent myself? Number one, we need to know that there is none like our God. There is none that can be compared to him. Uh, the parish pastor shared with us a testimony towards the end of the, the first session that we had of the man who was shot. And I, I asked myself, at that time, why is it that God did not deliver him? But God wanted to prove a point. They shot him. The bullet went through his nose. Praise God. They thought he had died. He did not die. When they were going to do operation, they were looking for a, a part of the body, you know, to, 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 to take some, some things so that they can do the grafting. But before the following day, bone had grown. Glory be to God. So we need to know that there is none like our God. It doesn't matter what you are going through. If no one can fix it, my God can fix it for you. And he will fix it for you in Jesus' mighty name. Psalm 14 verse 1 says, It's only a fool that sees in his heart that there is no God. For all that we have seen, 
for the past four or five months, and you are still saying there is no God, then there is no other name for you than a fool. I have seen a prime minister being wheeled out of the intensive care unit helplessly. The only thing he could do was to wave to his citizens. I have seen presidents caught unawares. I have seen people who felt that they could wield power at any point in time. Suddenly, the owner of the power said, submit it, and they submitted it. So there is none like our God. Is the Alpha, his Omega. This will help us to know how we relate with him. There is no power elsewhere except you are given. Let this affect our worship with him positively. Let this affect the way we treat God. Let this affect the way we treat our fellow human beings. Let this affect the way we relate. There is none like our God. Number two, know that all things, how many things? All things, including what? Including everything. Whatever difficult situation that you may be going through, know that all things work together for what? For good. For them that love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Whatever may have been the situation or condition, is it loss of job? Is it loss of business? Is it loss of opportunities? Is it the loss of, the, of, of, of loved ones? According to Tony Robbins, every problem is a gift. Without problems, we will not grow. There is nothing that happens in the life of a child of God that will not result in miracles. And yours will not be an exception in the name of Jesus Christ. The psalmist said in Psalm 119 verse 71, he said, it is good for me, Psalm 119 verse 71, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The bigger the problem, the greater the testimonies. Lazarus was in the womb for four days, and everybody was taken aback when he came back to life. The blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, verse 42, 46 to 52, wouldn't have been mentioned at all in the Bible if not for his, the case that he had. Whatever problem you have, is to make you grow, and you will grow in Jesus' mighty name. It was problem that brought David to limelight. It was the challenges of work that brought Peter to have an encounter with Jesus in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. I pray this morning that the more our relationship with God will be closer in Jesus' mighty name. Number three, implement your next plan. That the Gio told us during the lockdown. He said, whatever plan you have, put it down. And I want to believe that we put some plans down during the lockdown. It's time for you to implement the plan that you have. I pray that the Lord God Almighty will breathe the breath of life upon your plans in Jesus' mighty name. Number four, change your valleys. Change your valleys. God gave you an eye another chance. A lot of people died that we never thought that they would, they would die. It's not because they lack care. It's not because they lack money. But somehow, only God can explain it. So that we are gathered here this morning is an indication that God has given us another chance. So we need to change our values. Those things that you hold in high esteem, make good use of the opportunity that God has given you. Reinvent yourself by committing yourself to God afresh. Joshua said in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Joshua 24, verse 15. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Is that your own sentence this morning? Is that what you are saying to God? Is that your own belief? Is that your own conviction this morning? I pray that it shall be so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's run away from things that lack eternal values. Let's throw them away. We must serve the Lord as if tomorrow will never come. Number five, step up your giving. Yes, giving. Step up your giving. First thing that comes to mind when we hear giving in the church is tight and offering. Beyond these, be kind to people. Show kindness, show generosity. Your kindness and generosity will be of value. Give your time to God. Give your time to the things of God. Give your treasure, give your talents. I want to ask you this morning. When you look at the fleets of cars that you have, 
when you look at the fleets of cars that you have, glory be to God. When you look at the fleets of cars that you have, how many were you able to ride during the lockdown? How many? Even where they are parked, they were consuming money. Suddenly you discover that the battery is no longer functional. You got to buy another one. You top it up because the, the fuel level is going down. Glory be to God. Amen. Look at the pairs of shoes that you have. How many did, were you able to wear? I brought out a shirt last Sunday. I was going to wear it. And suddenly I discovered that it has turned brown. So I have to return it to the dry cleaner because it was not worn for several months. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. So it's, it's a lesson for every one of us. Amen. Just shout hallelujah where you are. You may not know the reason. Once again, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And you will know the reason why we shouted that hallelujah very soon. Amen. Number six. Be prepared at all times. When you look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the word lock did not appear. I'm sure of King James Version, I don't know of other versions. But the original version, the word lock did not what? Did not appear. What do we call lock? When preparation meets with opportunities, it is called lock. When the man is prepared, and suddenly there's an opportunity, so that man is lucky. There is no lock anywhere. It's preparation that meets with opportunity. I pray that your preparation will meet with opportunities in Jesus' mighty name. So I'm encouraging you this morning. Be prepared. David was prepared before he became the king. Can you please show us 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12? And 1 Samuel 17, 26. 1 Samuel 16, 12. Are you there? 1 Samuel 16, 12. I'm in a hurry to give this news. But 1 Samuel 16, 12 first. And he said... And brought him in. Now this, this was David. When, when Samuel was going to ordain him. And the seven sons of Jesse appeared. And Samuel asked Jesse. Are these only the sons that you have? He said no. There is still the youngest one. He's in the bush. Taking care of animals. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was what? Can you give me the life application version. Or the new living version. Now he was ruddy. And with all of a beautiful countenance. Go back, go back to verse 11. Okay, and Jesus sent for him. He was dark and what? And handsome. A man that was taking care of animals. The Bible described him as a handsome man. He was dark. He was handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one anointing. He was prepared for it. He did not allow his background to keep him on the ground. In spite of the fact that he was, he was the one they abandoned in the bush, he still took care of himself. Can you give us 1726? 1726, 1 Samuel 1726. David asked the soldiers, now the, the father sent him. He was already in Saul's house. So he was shortly between Saul's palace and his father, his father's home. But the father sent him to the battlefront to go and give provision, to make provision for his brothers. David asked the soldiers standing nearby because everybody was, was, was they, they, I mean, they were afraid because Goliath kept appearing morning and night for 40 days. Nobody could tame him. So he asked, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he's allowed to defy the armies of the living God? And his brother suddenly came, who brought you here? I know the naughtiness of your heart. You have come to see the battle. You are not going to see it. Go back to the field. He said, no, this is where I belong. And God gave him victory. He was prepared for it. Another man you need to look at his story is Joseph. In Genesis chapter 41 verse 14, Joseph was prepared physically and emotionally before he became the prime minister. Verse 14 says, Pharaoh sent for Joseph after he had been forgotten for two years. Remember? That he interpreted the dream for the butler and the baker. And they did not remember him. The butler that was spared did not remember him. Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once. And he was quickly 
brought from the prison. In other words, the king said, quickly go and fetch me the man you said can interpret my dream. What did he do? After he shaved, they were ready with that the king wants you in the palace. He said, hold on. He shaved himself and changed his clothes. He prepared to be a prime minister, to become a prime minister. Not just to become an interpreter. He was prepared to mount his position. He went in and stood before Pharaoh. This season you will stand before kings. In the name of Jesus Christ. How prepared are you? We can pray for a thing. Prayer is good. God is answering prayer. God has just answered one prayer now. Glory be to God. But it's preparation that converts you to what they call luck. Glory be to God. You are looking for a job. 2 p.m. You have not taken your bath. You are looking for a job on a Sunday morning. You went out with a pair of bathroom slippers. What so if so, 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 somebody calls you and comes to the office for an interview now? Will you be able to appear? Each time I step out of my house, I ask myself, can I appear like this anywhere? Somebody recommended someone to me, I think about two months ago, or a month ago, to, to start a job somewhere. So the young man came, and I looked at the way he dressed. He said, I'm not happy with this. I said, it's within me. However, drop your CV with this young man. Two days after, the person who collected his CV called me to say that he has brought his CV. That the way he dressed today was even worse than the first day that I saw him. I said, his account, I mean, his issue is closed. Glory be to God. So we need to prepare. A businessman, prepare. Pay your tax. Do your auditing. You don't know where God can take you in the next few minutes. Get prepared. Say to yourself, be prepared. And lastly, be thankful. Be thankful. If you are not grateful to God, your tank can never be full. Yours is not the worst condition. There are so many people whose conditions are worse than yours. Be thankful to God. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. In conclusion, God has a purpose for you. His thoughts towards you are of peace. Here comes a new season. Let us make the best use of this season. Put behind your failures. Forget your disappointments. Be determined to make yourself happy. No one else can make you happy. You're the only one that can make yourself happy. So be determined to make yourself happy. Here comes the season of fruitfulness. Here comes the season of multiplication. Here comes the season of abundance. Here comes the season of prosperity. Here comes the season of progress. Here comes the season of advancement. Key, it, key into it, and it shall be so with you and for you and for every member of your household. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Just where you are, bow your head with me and say, Lord, I thank you for counting me worthy to be alive today. I'm grateful to you. 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 I'm grateful to you, King of Glory. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be magnified. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for keeping every member of my household. Thank you for keeping every member of Goshen Church. I have said it before and I will say it repeatedly. That we are alive today does not mean that we are not infected. Some were infected and without you knowing, without you knowing, it went out the way it came. You met people in the marketplace, you met people in the mall that were infected. You contacted them. Somehow, God spared your life. God spared your life. You are alive today not because you don't have underlying conditions. But somehow, in God's infinite mercy, he singled you out for his visitation. Thank him for visiting you. He said, who is man that thou art mindful of him? Who is the son of man that thou visits him? Thank you for visiting me. Thank you for visiting your church. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. The one that walk in God. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name this morning. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Remaining where we are, you are here this morning. 
you have not known Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you knew him but along the line, you deviated. I can see God stretching his two hands this morning to receive you. Just lift up your right hand wherever you are. You want to give your life to Christ this morning. You are saying, Lord, come into my life. Come into my life. I'm releasing my all to you. Just where you are, raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. And tell the Lord this morning, I want to surrender all to you. I'm surrendering all to you. If you are raising it, please raise it very well. And above your head. It's between you and your God. It's between you and your God. Don't allow this moment to pass you by. I said earlier on that it's a privilege that you are alive today. Because of the grace of God. That is why you are here. If you are raising the hand, please raise it very well. Let Anosha attend to you. Anybody? Is there anyone like that? The rest of us, let's lift up our voice and say, Father, I pray for the recovery of everyone who lost one thing or the other in the course of the pandemic. Let's go ahead this morning and pray for the recovery of everyone who lost, who lost those who lost their job, those who lost property, those who lost one thing or the other. Father, please recover for them. Recover for them. Recover for them. Recover for them, Lord God. Recover for them. Those who lost opportunities, recover for them. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Lord and our Savior, we thank you this morning. The Holy One of Israel, we bow before your throne. Thank you for the grace given to us to make redress where necessary. Thank you for the grace given to us to be alive this morning, to witness this day. Please be exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, as you have spoken in your ears this morning, let it be established. Help us to know you the more. Help us to follow you the more closely. Help us to love you the more dearly in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray again, Lord God, Father, for those of our brethren or our loved ones that have lost one thing or the other to this pandemic. Your thoughts towards us are not of evil, and you have it in mind to take us to the expected end. My Lord and my Father, let the expected end of goodness, of kindness, come quickly to this, your people. Let there be recovery, total recovery, absolute recovery, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, we ask this morning, take away this plague from the face of the earth. Let there be peace. Take away a volatile situation. Take away ambiguous situation. Take away risky situations in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be your holy name, our Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen.